This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, welcome to the worship services of uh, St. John and Trinity Lutheran Parish of Hillsborough and Hope, respectively. We pray that this day that the Lord would bless you uh, as you receive his word as he comes to us with uh, his life and forgiveness and salvation that have been won for us by the cross, by the tomb in which he was buried, but from which he has been freed to offer us life in his name. Our hopes are that in coming weeks we will be able to again regather for worship. A lot of uh, protocols have to be followed to phase in that worship. But uh, please, to the members of St. John's Hillsboro and Trinity uh, Hope, uh, watch your emails. Uh, I'm working with our church elders and trying to follow the protocols given by uh, our health officials at the federal and state levels to, uh, to uh, try to necessitate uh, those things that we'll need to do is, uh, before we gather again as, an entire, as entire assemblies of believers. But uh, continue to pray for one another. Let us uh, be about prayer for one another and for our nation and for the world in uh, the time of this uh, great stressful time. May the Lord grant us in his time uh, to be freed from those social distancing limitations and to be back in one another's company. I invite you to stand for the invocation followed by the opening verses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us praise God in the hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Those present may be seated.
ourselves before God with confession of our sins, followed by God's gracious word of absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called or ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoicing in God's fullness of grace accorded us, let us join together in the introit uh, for this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, portions of Psalm 95 of John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. And I lay down my life for my sheep. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. And I lay down my life for my sheep. We sing in praise of the Lamb of God who was slain for us. This is the feast of victory for our God. This is the feast of victory for our God.
from death, the shepherd of your sheep. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and of prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Where this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on a tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. We join together in singing the Alleluia and verse. Having received the word of God and of Christ, 
we join together in confessing the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated. We join together in singing the hymn of the day, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
rejoice, fellow Christians. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Again, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Even amidst all these radical lifestyle changes that you and I are enduring during this worldwide pandemic, thieves are still out there, still stealing, still doing harm. And the great thief, Satan, hasn't put a hold on all of his devilish works of trying to rob Christ church of the sheep. He is still about seeking to get us to buy into, to swallow his lying Christ promises for a more abundant life without Jesus. It is good that we review past history too, seeing that these and robbers have long dwelt amongst all peoples. Chief among them, the thief and robber who has been so busily assaulting God's creation and Christ's church from the very beginning. For a while in the beginning, God had made the heavens and the earth and all therein with mankind, with humanity as crowning work, and saw and declared it all very good. We soon see how the thief entered the picture, also known as Satan tempting our first ancestors. We also learn how easily they gave in. Their innocence gone, stolen, killed. Paradise ruined with the entrance of sin. And after Adam and Eve sinned so that they not face his everlasting wrath and condemnation, God in his grace expelled them from Eden. Outside that garden of peace and harmony and joy and the full life with God and each other, their existence became one of much toil and struggle in a world of sin. A world, the kind of world we're familiar with. Oh, surely they must have longed often for what they had foolishly forfeited, and yet they could not re-enter Eden. We hear in Genesis 3, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. The Lord God drove him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east end of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. The world's greatest ongoing tragedy had occurred. The thief had done his wretched, wretched life-stealing and destroying work. He had robbed Adam and Eve, but also you and me of life. For as sin entered the world, their relationships with God and each other were broken. Their world, like ours, became a most troublesome place. Soon their own son, Cain, would kill his brother, Abel, and life's misery and brokenness would continue from there, that point on. We, too, know such misery. Plus, the door to rich, everlasting life with God has been slammed shut to us all. Any sinner forcibly re-entering would die forever, for God allows nothing unholy in his eternal holy presence in heaven. Still, God is bigger than us. Not willing our eternal separation from him, God sent his own son in our flesh to take from us the sin that condemned us. Jesus stated the purpose of his Mission from the Father, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And he declared that he'd come to reopen paradise to us, to us sinners. 
If anyone enters by me, he said, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. After all, I am the door. So truly God has blessed us with his son Jesus, his chosen door by which we may enter and receive the full life that God desires for us all. For God desires that no one perish in their sin and be cut off from him forever. No, when Jesus first said, I am the door, he knew full well what that would entail. He knew that he must bear your sins and mine and the sins of the world on himself to be the portal between heaven and earth, between God and mankind, between a world fallen into sin and a perfect paradise. This would cost him big time. Jesus would suffer to the death. The flaming sword of God's justice would fall upon him. And yet, willingly, gladly, this good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. And this Easter season, that deserves an alleluia. Praise the Lord. But not just in Easter season, but throughout our lives. We're suspended on a cross between God and man. The Son of God and Son of Man, Jesus, opened to us poor wretched sinners' paradise. This we could never do by our own efforts. That's what Jesus says, I am the door. He is pointing us to his death and rising. The death he meant to pay for our sins so that we would be, receive favor from God and be able to re-enter paradise and the life the now resurrected Son of God offers us on the other side of that door. He is, as he has said this morning, the door, the only door. As we'll hear next week from John 14, there is one way back to the Father. And Jesus is that way, that true way, that way of life everlasting. All others are not real at all, but false. They are bruises of the great thief. And they lead only into the flaming sword of God's holy judgment and pronouncement of guilt upon the unbelieving sinner to death and to hell. But in Jesus, we have the door to heaven. Through him, we can enter paradise to full and everlasting life. And entering by Jesus, we aren't just saved. One of the things he mentioned to us, we are also the sheep. He picked it in the 23rd Psalm. Return to Eden without a worry. At rest in green pastures and beside still waters, our souls restored. One day we'll move about on paths of righteousness, a rich, face, a rich feast that of God and Christ awaiting us at his table, dwelling there forever. We'll be free from all trouble and sin and death forever, secure, filled with joy and gladness, never fearing expulsion by God once more. In the meantime, that door to paradise is not far off. Neither must we find that door on our own. That door, namely Jesus, is here, in person. He speaks to us, his sheep. Our Savior and Good Shepherd is here for us, who, as Peter described for us, reminded us, are like strange sheep. The King of Love nonetheless speaks, our Good Shepherd calling us back to himself. He's always saying, come unto me. And as he told us, his sheep know his voice. We hear him and we follow him. Though you and I are prone to chasing after the world's many captivating temptations and sin, still faithful Jesus is with us along the way, beckoning us back to the quiet waters of his baptismal promises. 
His Holy Spirit at work opening our hearts and our minds again and again to this doorway to heaven, enabling us to confess our lowliness of condition, our sinfulness, but also enabling us to drink with gladness, face gladness, to drink in his absolution and promises of life, much as did a long ago holy thief who hung on a cross beside Jesus. Remember, Jesus said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. And much is his promise for us as well. In a sense, we've got a glimpse of paradise already. We live in the kingdom of God. God knows we live among many dangers in this evil fallen world. And he knows our hearts too are filled with sin. And so our shepherd comes to us ready his table for us. For us sheep in the midst of our many enemies, even as we await that future life in paradise. And with his body and blood, Jesus offers us to take of the fruit of the tree of life. He gives us his life, his death conquering life. And with joy, our shepherd has given his life for us all. Now he is rejoicing to give us the kingdom, the fruits of his death and rising given to us. He was the one who made all the labor to do that. We freely receive. And yet today the cherubim who guarded paradise's door are here also. Oh, they're not here to keep the believers out, but singing praises to our Savior who has reopened paradise to us. For God unites us in one holy communion with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. Yes, we are gathered together by our Lord to praise him for the Lamb who was slain on our behalf. And where he who was also the door is, so we and all his saints redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Again, alleluia. Truly, some reside on one side, we on the other. Still, we are united, gathered around our Savior. For Jesus has opened the tomb, he has conquered death and Satan. He is living to remove us from us our sins, so that he may open paradise to us. That's what Stephen saw and testified to, to the Jews about Jesus. He saw heaven's door open wide. The unbelieving sinners, those minus faith in Jesus, could see no such thing. For in fact, to them, the door was shut. But to all who by faith are in Christ, the door is wide open. His sheep hear his voice and know him and follow him. And as he says, he gives them, us, everlasting life. For that is our good shepherd's goal for you and for me, life eternal. And while life now may be a struggle, living amidst many enemies, battling our own doubts and sin, wandering through the valley of the shadow of death, you and I need not fear, for the Lord is our good shepherd. And he's not content just to help us make the best of our lives here and now in this world. His will and his work is to lead us back into paradise where we belong all along, by way of the door, his body. In him, trust you are safe. By him, believe God forgives you all your sin. Through him, believe God's justice has been carried out. Now, for you, there is life. And when at God's appointed time, like Stephen, you fall asleep in death, no matter what the circumstances preceding that death are, this door, Jesus, you, with your own eyes, will see with joy welcoming you into paradise. And as believers through, the time, through past times have confessed, you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But till then, he's right here with you and me, granting us also his spirit to live in us, so as to comfort us as we say, with his rod and staff, with his life-giving word. 
Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, continue to guard your hearts and your minds through the same Jesus Christ, the door, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in singing the offertory in response to our God, the offertory entitled, What Shall I Render to the Lord? Please stand. Shepherd, you have not withheld from us your love, 
but emptied yourself fully upon the cross that we might be saved. Move our hearts to such a joy of faith that with generosity we may bring you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart and serve our neighbors in need with the resources you so richly supply to us. We pray you, Lord, to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy, granting us those things profitable for us and our salvation and keeping from us all things harmful. For you live and rule our lives with love for the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And finally, almighty everlasting God, your Son is assured forgiveness of sins and deliverance from eternal death. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit that our faith in him may increase daily and that we may hold fast to the hope that on the last day we shall be raised in glory to everlasting life through our good shepherd and savior and living Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Receive now the blessing of our Lord with his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. One brief announcement before we uh, conclude our worship with our closing hymn. That is, uh, we encourage you to continue to avail yourselves of the opportunity to separate separately at a distance, still gather with God's people spiritually, in spirit and in truth. We are God's people. And while there aren't many of us in one place at any given time, together God brings us together in, in the Spirit. And uh, even here this morning, there are two or three gathered together, as there have been in past weeks. Until that time where we're able to gather together, avail yourselves of those opportunities to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the opportunities maybe to sing from your homes, from lounge chairs or recliners or couches, the great news of God and our hymns. I invite you also to look at uh, the emails that come uh, the day before worship and, and also then to turn to Facebook or YouTube, our channels, to uh, watch our worship services. And we will keep you apprised as changes are made along the way. Hopefully we can be back together as God's people in worship by the end of this month. But whatever the case might be, our Lord is with us. Let us join together in singing the hymn, The Day of Resurrection.
in your homes and in our community as you are able to these days. We rejoice in the peace that he has won for us, along with our salvation and life continuing in Jesus. 